Hello and welcome to this instructional video for the DeSuta Medical OsteoDrive Small Bone Power Tool System. This power tool system is designed for use predominantly in hand and foot based procedures, but is also suitable for a wide range of small bone, max fax and dental procedures. We have two hand pieces available, both of which are modular and connected via a cable to an electric console. Firstly, we have the MCU pistol grip handpiece, and then we have the MCI pencil grip handpiece. We have three consoles available for the OsteoDrive product range, the PC470, the PC471, and the PC472. The one you select will depend on the requirements of the hospital and the types of cases that are likely to be carried out. The PC470 is straightforward, simple, and is a plug and play system. If you want more control over settings, you'll need to choose the PC471, as this allows you to change the acceleration, torque, braking, and make surgeon profiles. If you need irrigation for your system, you will need to choose the PC472. All three of the consoles have an intuitive design and are straightforward to use. They also operate a traffic light system that consists of four different colored lights. Blue being in standby mode, orange indicating safe mode, and green indicating the tool is active. There is also a fourth warning light that will illuminate in red. The ports all illuminate clearly to indicate the tool status to all of the staff inside the operating room. To connect the cable to the console, simply line up the red dot on the cable with the red dot on the connection port and slide straight in. To remove the cable, simply pinch on the metal collar and pull the cable straight out. Once your irrigation tubing is connected to the handpiece, you can simply take the cartridge and slide it into the console into this slot here. It'll slide in with a push and click. Once in position, you can take the top tube and run this off to your liquid bag. For more detailed information on how to use your console, such as adjusting settings and setting up surgeon profiles, please contact your local area rep. If you're using foot pedals for your OsteoDrive system, you have two options, the FS270, which is wired, and the FS271, which is wireless. For more information on how to set these up, please speak to your local area rep. I'm now going to show you the MCI270 pencil grip handpiece. To connect the handpiece to the console, simply use the cable as before and connect the red dot on the cable to the red dot on the handpiece. If you plan on using a foot pedal, you can simply plug this in to the correct slot on the console. However, if you plan on using the lever, simply take the lever and slide it over the handpiece into the grooves on the side of the handpiece, like so. Now, if I draw your attention to this safety switch here in the central zero position, the tool is in safe mode. The two arrows either side indicate whether the tool is in forward direction or reverse direction. The MCI handpiece is simple and intuitive and allows you to place an attachment with a simple push and click. Once the attachment is in place, you can run the tool as needed and once finished with the attachment, with the tool in safe mode, you can twist the locking collar here and pull the attachment straight out. The MCI270 handpiece can take a wide range of attachments, including drills, saws, wire drivers, burrs, metal cutters, and many others. I'm now going to show you how to attach some common consumables to the MCI handpiece, starting with K-wires. Here you can see our angled wire driver attachment which takes K-wires from 0.6 to 1.6 millimeters in diameter. To use this attachment, you can take an appropriate wire and push down on this lever to release the jaws. Slide the wire into position and release the lever to lock the wire in place. I can now put the tool into forward mode and run it. Once finished with the wire, press on the lever to release the wire and pull the wire straight out. It's also worth mentioning, we do have an inline wire driver, but this is not cannulated. I'm now going to show you how to attach a sagittal saw blade to your MCI270 handpiece. The type of saw blade you will need will be determined by the attachment you have chosen. 
Here, I have the SI270 button press sagittal saw. To use this, simply press the button on the bottom of the tool here to release the jaws. Then take your S86 style blade, slide it into position and release the button to lock into place. Once locked into place, you can also extend the end of the lever here to get closer to the surgical site. Once finished with the saw, press the button on the bottom of the attachment and slide the saw blade out. Now let's take a look at how to attach a reciprocating saw blade to your MCI270 handpiece. Here we have a CI270 attachment which takes S83 type reciprocating saw blades. Firstly, release the jaws of the attachment by pulling the nose and twisting in the clockwise direction. Once unlocked, you can take your saw blade and slide into the nose of the attachment like so. As you slide in, the system will lock itself. Ensure it's in the lock position. You can then place the saw into either the forward or reverse direction like so and depress the lever to run the saw. Once finished with the saw, place the tool back into safe mode, pull and twist the nose of the attachment to release the saw blade, then pull the saw blade straight out. I'm now going to show you how to attach an oscillating saw blade to an OI271 attachment. Once in safe mode, you can pull back the locking collar of the attachment, take your S86 type oscillating saw blade and slide it into position. Once in position, release the locking collar to hold the blade firmly in position. You can then depress the lever to run the saw. And once again, pull back on the locking collar to release the blade. Let's now look at how to attach a burr to your BI270 high-speed burr attachment. On your set, you will find an attachment holder, your BI270 attachment, and your burr guard. Firstly, Take the BI270 and place it into the attachment holder. You will then need to open this locking collar by twisting and firmly clicking open. You can now take your burr guard and slide it over the nose of the attachment and turn clockwise to lock into position. At this stage, you'll want to take your straight shank burr, place it into the nose of the tool and twist this locking collar back to the locked position. You can now remove from the attachment holder and place the whole attachment into your handpiece like so. And then your high speed burr is ready for use. Once finished with the burr, place the tool back into safe mode and twist the locking collar to release the attachment. If you plan to use irrigation with your MCI270 handpiece, you will need the PC472 console. This allows you to connect a T2100 irrigation kit via a cartridge. If you look at the nozzle at the end of the T2100 irrigation kit, you will see there is a blue magnet. This magnet allows you to place it onto the attachment you're using or any other attachment in a variety of positions. You can then run the tubing down the side of the handpiece in these little channels and then the rest of the tubing goes off to the console. I'm now going to show you how to attach a metal cutting burr to our BI278 attachment. On your set you will find an attachment holder, your BI278 metal cutter and potentially a splash guard. Firstly, take your attachment holder and place the BI278 into it. Twist this collar from the locked to the unlocked position, like so. Now take your splash guard and slide over the end of the attachment. At this point, you can take your metal cutting burr. Here we have a disc. Slide it into the end of the attachment and find the correct orientation before twisting the locking collar back to the locked position. Once locked, you can take the entire attachment out of the attachment holder, then slide the whole attachment into the MCI like so. Once in position, you can turn the safety switch to the forward position and run the tool by depressing the lever. Once finished with the metal cutter, 
Place the tool back into safe mode, like so, and then twist the locking collar to remove the attachment. 